video, I'm going to decompose sodium bicarbonate into three products. We're going to take masses and use percent yield stoichiometry calculations to prove the identity of those three products. Step one is to turn on your electronic balance and make sure that it goes to zero and that gram is the unit that's listed. The next thing is to have a clean, dry, large test tube and once the balance is zeroed and it says grams as your label, you can place your test tube on there. Mine doesn't roll off, so I'm able just to put the test tube directly on there. Make sure right now that you record 43.29 grams in your data table as your test tube's mass. The next step is to grab your test tube, a scupula, and your sodium bicarbonate, and add, in my case, I'm gonna add about three scoops full to the bottom of the test tube as best as I can and the amount really doesn't matter as long as it's not too much to heat and you've got enough to measure a change in mass with the balance that you have. So I'm going to take this again and since mine didn't roll off I'm able to set it on there and get my starting mass. So make sure that right now you record 48.87 in your data table as the sodium bicarbonate and the test tubes mass. I'm just going to move it and make sure it doesn't change. So again, I said 48.87, record that, on to the next step. The next step is to get your baking soda at a kind of an angle in the test tube like that so that you can get a nice even heating of that solid. I do have some up here that I'm gonna to have to worry about heating. You'll wanna put your test tube not at a horizontal angle, but fairly close like this and clamp it down securely. Having this end facing away from others, you're gonna put the Bunsen burner under this end and heat it and start the decomposition of sodium bicarbonate. Next step is to light your Bunsen burner and have a inner and outer blue cone flame like that and have it at kind of a low heat or medium heat first. You're then gonna take your Bunsen burner and put it underneath the end of the test tube. So you're gonna heat this test tube for about 10 minutes. Um, start with kind of a low heat, looking for any kind of chemical change that you are looking for. I'm gonna move this up so that we can actually see the test tube and move it a little bit closer because we're looking for evidence of those three products. Um, when sodium bicarbonate decomposes, you do not get a color change. So it, it's gonna make this a little more complicated. So I'm gonna try to get as close as I can to the chemical change so that you can see what's going on in that test tube. We're going to do the same thing with carbon dioxide tests that I did in my copper to carbonate hydroxide decomposition video. We're gonna look for evidence of water forming on the inside of that test tube. And I believe if you look carefully, you're gonna see that right now. The next thing we're gonna do is do some carbon dioxide tests and see if that's present. So I'm gonna do the first one, which is where I light the wood splint and I place it into or near the, what's called the mouth of the test tube and see if there's any evidence of carbon dioxide. To me, it looks like there is. Extinguish the flame, I'll try it one more time. Here we go. And try not to get any of that burning into the actual test tube to, that will increase the mass. So to me, that's definitely showing carbon dioxide is possibly present. The next thing I'm gonna do is do the universal indicator test, which is where if carbon dioxide is present, it will react with the water in the universal indicator and it'll turn red. So again, keep universal indicator away from your flame. Just take your um, Q-tip or whatever you're gonna use. I just have it soaked in the universal indicator, which is green at this case to say neutral. I wanna put that into the test tube and hopefully look for signs of change. I'm trying to keep my hand away from the heat also for safety's sake. And again, that definitely looks like I'm getting a color change towards the pH of five. Let me go one more time and just see if I can get the pH to be even a little bit lower. Again, this is another positive test for carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide reacts with uh, water to form carbonic acid. All right, now it's just a matter of heating this for up to 10 minutes or maybe more we're going to also have to drive off what we believe is water. And once the test tube looks like it's completely dry inside and we've heated this as long as we can for the time that we have, in this case, usually about 10 minutes, we will then re-mass the test tube after it's cooled. So I'll catch back with you in about five minutes. 
after I heat it, and then we'll see what it looks like. I wanted you to see partway through the heating what it looked like for me to heat kind of the upper portion of this test tube. And I'm gonna move up the test tube so you can see that that definitely seems to look like water. And you can watch that water boiling from a liquid phase into the gaseous phase. It's even making some noise there that you can detect. So I'm gonna go back to heating the lower portion, the solid, to make sure that it completely decomposes. Because I don't have time for a second heating, I have increased the heat pretty high so that I do not have to do a second heating. But if time permits, that's something that you could do is finish uh, heating this, let it cool, weigh it, and then reheat it. Um, I'm gonna do just one heating. And so I've heated it for about 10 minutes, so I'm going to turn off the Bunsen burner. It's best to turn down the Bunsen burner to a lower height. Um, you can sometimes even turn off the Bunsen burner from the bottom. The other thing too is remember to turn off at the gas jet by turning it perpendicular. And then again, I have my students take the Bunsen burner and um, press it so that I know that it is no longer having any methane coming out of it. So now it's just time to wait for this to cool and then reweigh it. So again, using that same electronic balance you've used for the first two masses, you're gonna take your cooled test tube and place it onto the balance. And we hope that the mass has gone down because it seems that we drove off two of the three products. We believe one's water and one's carbon dioxide. The question is what is this sort of new white solid that looks to be the same as baking soda, but it's not. So we get a 46.81 grams. So then the next thing you're gonna do is move on to the calculations in the lab to try to prove the identity of all three products, especially this solid that is white left in the test tube.